that Tai Chi is magic. And um, Tai Chi Twin is not magic. Like, they're, they're basically, they're, they're a bunch of different styles of Tai Chi, but it basically comes down to two schools. Tai Chi Twin, which is the, the unarmed form. Twin is fist in, in, in Chinese, but fist doesn't mean punching. It just means that it's a, it's a hand-to-hand combat system. And then there's Tai Chi Jin, the sword style, which is sword fighting. And it's kind of interesting that they pair sword fighting and grappling together because if you look at uh, you know other historical sword fighting styles like um, like Kenjutsu, Japanese sword fighting, that that is coupled with Jujutsu, Japanese grappling, if you will. And why does grappling and sword fighting go together? And it's the same thing with Western uh, sword fighting as well. For example, there was um, I believe it was an Italian swordsman wrote this uh, a book. It's not a long one, but it's, it's an old treatise on. Um, on the rapier, you know, that long, um, kind of thin, but, but sharp sword that a uh, gentleman would duel with back in the day. And he wrote this kind of confusing thing, which is in single rapier combat, the better wrestler almost always kills his opponent. If neither man knows how to wrestle, the stronger man almost always kills his opponent. And when I first read that, I thought, well, but they have swords, they have sharp swords. Why, why would wrestling or strength matter? And then I realized, you know, just studying more about um, historical martial arts and kenjutsu and, and so on, when the swords cross into a bind, which they do all the time, as soon as you cross blades, that happens almost instantly in a sword fight. And when you're playing with a long sword, basically, you know, it becomes a grappling situation very quickly. And the longer the sword, you know, the deeper that bind can become and the the more important grappling becomes, which is why the, you know, the samurai used jujitsu, which later became judo and Brazilian jujitsu and so on. And that is why when you read these old like German sword fighting codices, there's so much emphasis on wrestling technique. And where was I going with this? Oh yes, Tai Chi. So Tai Chi is divided up into essentially these two schools, the grappling aspect, Tai Chi Twin, and the sword aspect, Tai Chi Jin. So, but today in, in modern culture, it's, it's, been, it's been relegated to basically, um, you know, exercises for old people that they do in the park and nothing else. Right? Very few people use Tai Chi in actual combat anymore, and most people don't even remember what it's for. It would be like if, if people forgot what wrestling was for, okay? If nobody rem- remembered what wrestling was for, except maybe four or five old guys who, who still remember, but everybody else still practiced shadow wrestling. And if every morning, you know, the old people would go out and put on their wrestling singlets and do some shadow wrestling, and shadow wrestling looks goofy, right? You do, like, do, you, do you ever do like shadow judo by yourself? Well, um, uh, shadow judo, yeah, yeah, you could do that. You could practice your moves. But I mean, I, yeah. I also wrestle now. It's been, uh, I've been wrestling now for maybe a total of a year, but it's something that I do regularly. So my usual schedule is judo three times a week and wrestling two times a week, freestyle wrestling. So I'm actually, yeah. I actually understand like wrestling double legs, single legs, and, and you know, I'm getting um, more and more knowledgeable as time goes on because I used to just, <laughs> focus on judo but then when i realized that if i wrestling actually would benefit my judo so even when you you, t- you, you uh, what you're saying here about uh shadow wrestling i could yeah. i could do it i like i i perfectly understand what you mean i could do the, you know Indeed. like arm drag you know single leg you know come yeah, back what does it up, look like you know? when you do it by yourself it, it looks like it without like context, it, looks it looks like you know, like these, these yeah, you go for an arm movements. drag and it's like, hmm. and this, this is a Tai Chi movement, this, you know, doing this thing and you do it by yourself and it looks like you're trying to be a wizard casting a spell, but mm-hmm. no. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it makes sense to me. Like, uh, but you're right about that. I think that's, that's the thing. Like now that you explain it in terms of uh, the two styles where you have Tai Chi grappling and Tai Chi sword, like hand, Tai Chi hand to hand and Tai Chi sword and how essentially when there's a sword fight, you're going to clash and you're going to end up like really close. 
And when you're close, well, you're not going to like disengage uh, respectfully and then start again. No, you're going to, you know, uh, capitalize on uh, wherever you can in that position. So that's going to, that's going to, that's where the grappling aspect of it comes in. So now it makes a lot of sense. And, and I think that a lot of people, you're right about that. I think a lot of people don't even know, even people who teach Tai Chi or who are supposedly masters might have forgotten this and they don't. They just don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to explain it properly. They don't know how to teach it because they don't have the whole thing, the whole package. So, you know, for, for a Tai Chi master to tell you that Tai Chi is, is for, um, uh, you know, hand-to-hand combat, and like he might not actually know what he's talking about, and it's not going to translate very well when you actually get into a fight. But if you actually understood the whole system and somebody taught it to you properly in the context of sword fighting and then you have to grapple, you could actually make it work. 